Hello everyone, now we will discuss on the topic secondary treatment equipment part 2 and in this class we will be focusing on the trickling filter, anaerobic sludge blanket reactor and lagoon. So, trickling filter as you know in this filter microbial layer is formed on some solid support and then water is passed through it and then microbes work on the organic compound present in it and degrade it and the water is purified. Okay. So, here in this slide if we see that this is our influent here it is spread okay. and this is domed enclosure and we have some media here and air with influent passed here. So, aerobic condition is provided otherwise it will be anaerobic condition. So, aerobic condition is provided water is passed from the top and there is a microbial layer which is developed on the material used in this in the media. Then after degradation of the organic compounds the water is collected here and then it is going for clarifier and then sludge and water that is going for further treatment tertiary treatment. So, this is the working of the trickling filter and this is second commonly used biological waste treatment process and normally consists of a rock bed 1 to 3 meter in depth with enough opening between rocks to allow air to circulate easily. Influent is prickled over the bed packing which is coated with a biological slime and typical film thickness is 100 micrometer to 2 millimeter and for large biofilm thickness anaerobic conditions may be created at the base of the slime. So, if it is a large then at the base part may be anaerobic condition and under decay phase microorganisms lost their ability to cling to the solid material and the film gets detached from the surface after certain time when microbes are dead. So, that can be detached from the surface and will be going out with the water and settling tank following the tickling filter removes the detached bacteria film and some suspended matter. So, that is the need for the separation of the sludge. Now, here also in case of tickling filter it may be low rate or high rate and another is super rate. So, low rate means low organic and hydraulic loading and high rate means high organic and hydraulic loading and this is basically used for partial or roughing treatment. Certainly, when we are giving more uh, organic load, so it may not be completely treated. So, that is for rough treatment or partial treatment this is used and high rate we can get or throughput is less in that case. And super rate filter is also there. In this case synthetic plastic materials have been used in recent times as packing material in tickling filters and these filters are known as super rate filters. The packing material has high void space and it also has a much higher degree of microbial attachment in the available surface area. So, these uh, you know the microbial layer development will be influenced by many factor. One is the heterogeneity of the surface and the affinity between the uh, and compatibility of the microorganisms with the surface of the media. So, plastics materials have shown very good performance in their respect and they are able to give super rate trickling filter. Now, some typical design criteria for low rate, high rate and super rate filters are provided in this slide. Here we see the hydraulic loading that is meter cube per meter square per day that is equal to 1 to 4 for low rate filter, but here it is 10 to 40 high rate filter and 40 to 200 super rate filter. So, very very high you see up to 200 and then organic loading kg beautify by meter cube per day here we see 0 0.08 to 0 0.32 and here 0 0.32 to 1.0 and 0 0.8 to 6. So, organic loading rate is very high. So, we can use more organic containing material or the waste water waste water and depth we see 1.5 to 3 1 to 2 and 4.5 to 12 again the super rate depth is more and recirculation ratio. So, recirculation ratio is more in super rate filter, but this is lower in case of high rate filter and negligible in case of low rate filter 
and filter media rock slag in case of low rate filter in case of high rate filter rock slag synthetic materials and super rate only synthetic materials and filter flies if we see the low rate many flies are there but a high rate filter few larvae are west away and since the flow rate is very high loading rate is very high uh, so few or none so flies are not able to grow there and then sloughing is intermittent in case of low rate filter and it is continuous in high rate filter and super rate filter it is also continuous and effluent quality usually fully nitrified in case of low rate filter and nitrified at low loadings and nitrified at low loadings so this is super rate filter and beautifier removal 80 to 85 percent in this case high rate 65 to 80 percent and this case also super rate also 65 to 80 percent. So, which we see if we go for higher rate certainly the removal will be lower. So, this is also evident from this table. Now, we will see the modeling aspect of the trickling filter. So, you know although it is an established process, but the microbial layer which is developed on the material or in the media that is not very stable. Okay. So, because of the uncertainty of this and the flow uncertainty it may be clogged or something else the uniform flow we may not get. So, because of this complexity in the systems although many people attempted to develop some first principle based models, but still no effective models are developed and you see here in this case the important parameters for predicting the performance of a trickling filter are the hydraulic and organic loadings and the degree of purification required. Several investigations have attempted to correlate operating data with the bulk design parameters, but a generalized kinetic model has not been developed due to unstable nature of the biological slime layer and the unpredictable hydraulic loadings. Now, here we will see one empirical relationship this has been proposed by Ekenfelder. So, Ekenfelder proposed the this equation the following equation for predicting the performance of tickling filter. So, here we are getting a c by s i equal to exponential minus k into l into a s to the power m into a by q to the power n, where a c is the concentration of set of settled effluent from the filter. That means, in the settled effluent what is the concentration of the organic compound. So, that is we are getting a c and s i concentration of the influent to the filter. So, the water which is getting entry into the filter what is the concentration of the organ organic compound there s i and k is the empirical rate constant this k is the empirical rate constant meter per day and for system this 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 value will be constant uh, for a particular system and a cross sectional area of filter a is the cross sectional area of the filter. So, which filter we are using so that is the cross sectional area of the filter. Okay. And A s is the specific surface area of the filter. So, what is the specific surface area of the filter? So, packing material is there. So, what is the specific surface area? That is surface area of the filter divided by volume. So, what is the surface area divided by volume? So, that is specific surface area of the filter and Q wastewater flow rate. So, what is the flow rate of wastewater meter cube per second? And this is our Q and M and N, these are two constant empirical constant and this L, L is the filter depth. So, L is the filter depth. So, this is the expression which is used to design the tickling filter to find out the length of the tickling filter if we know the diameter of it or the vice versa. Now, this k is the empirical rate constant and this empirical rate constant that can be dependent on temperature and at any temperature k t that is equal to k 25 into theta to the power t minus 25, where theta is the temperature coefficient which may be taken as equal to 1.08 and the and by using this formula we can get the value of k t at any temperature. And now we have to calculate a a s q l etcetera. So, we will be seeing here a s specific surface area. So, specific surface area 
that means surface area by volume. So, this can be written as A is equal to 6 into 1 minus epsilon by psi into d bar, where d r is equal to geometric mean size of the packing material. So, d bar or d whatever you can mention either d or d bar. Now, we will be solving one numerical problem. The statement is determine the depth of a low rate trickling filter that has a diameter of 43 meter. The hydraulic loading is 0 0.13 meter cube per second and the influent and effluent BOD5 are 255 mg per liter and 20 mg per liter respectively. The unit operates at 27 degree centigrade assume the empirical constants m equal to n equal to 1 and k 25 is equal to 0 0.1 m per day meter per day. The packing media are rocks which have a porosity of 0 0.6 and a sphericity of 0 0.9. The geometric mean size of the rocks is 80 millimeter. So, these are the given data on the basis of which we have to determine the depth of the low rate triggling filter. So, here we have expression A c by S i equal to exponential minus k l a s into a by q to the power m and to the power n. Since m equal to n equal to 1, so these values are not mentioned here. So, this equal to simply this one. Now, A s we can get from the previous expression that is c into 1 minus A s equal to 6 into 1 minus epsilon by psi into d. So, 90 psi value that is equal to sphericity 0 0.9 and porosity is 0 0.6. So, 6 into 1 minus 0 0.6, 0 0.9 into 80 mm. So, 80 into 10 to the minus 3 that is meter. So, that is equal to 33.33. 33 1 by m. So, the specific surface area value we are getting as this one and k 27 we will be using this formula k 25 into theta to the power 27 minus t that is equal to 25. So, this equal to 27 minus 25. So, this equal to 0 0.1 into 1.08 square 27 minus 25 2. So, that is 0 0.1166 meter per day. So, this value we are getting. Then we have to calculate the cross sectional area that is a value. So, that is equal to pi r square by 4. So, pi pi r square or pi d square by 4. So, 43 it is given that 43 meter diameter. So, pi d square by 4. So, I am getting equal to this meter square and q is given 0 0.13 meter cube per second that is equal to 11,000. 232 meter cube per day. So, we have to multiply it into say 60 that is will we get minute and then again 60 then we will get hour then 24. So, then we will be getting this one and then what will be the depth of the filter? We will be using all those values here A c and S i is given that is final concentration is 20 and initial concentration is 255 and exponential minus this k value is this one and then l I need to calculate. So, a s value is given this one and a by q a is given here and q we have calculated n equal to 1 and l equal to 1. So, this is the expression and by solving we will be getting the value of l that is 5.066 meter in this case. Now, we will discuss on u a s b that is a flow anaerobic sludge blanket reactor. So, in this case like this, so we have influent it will be there and then treated effluent will go through this and there will be some anaerobic zone and the sludge blanket will get okay, and sludge will be collected from this and from the top gas will be collected. So, this is the anaerobic sludge blanket reactor. So, for this USB important design points are for temperature greater than 20 degree centigrade SRT of around 30 to 50 days is used. SRT solid retention time 30 to 50 days is used and at equilibrium sludge produced per day is equal to sludge withdrawn per day 
and average concentration of sludge in USB reactor is 70 kg per meter cube and ratio of height of sludge blanket to total height is 0 0.4 to 0 0.5. So, what is the height of the sludge blanket and total height that ratio if we see that 0 0.4 to 0 0.5. So, these are some typical design parameter we can use this for design purpose also. And then here hydraulic retention time similar to any other cases reactor volume by flow rate and then solid retention time that is equal to total sludge in the reactor by sludge wasted per day. Okay. So, this is the relationship or we can see that the total sludge in the reactor what is this? This is equal to average concentration of the sludge in the reactor into sludge blanket height by total reactor height into effective coefficient into reactor volume. This is the expression which is used to calculate the total sludge in the reactor. And SRT solid retention time which we have defined here similar term are used in other applications also like sludge age. So, that sludge age is total mass of MLSS in aeration machine by daily mass of TSS in the influent. Okay. And then mean cell residence time age already you have discussed in our previous class classes that is total mass of MLSS in aeration machine by mass of suspended solids or wasted per day plus mass of suspended solids in effluent per day. So, which is going through the sludge and this is going through the water. So, this we have discussed in the previous class and here sometimes SRT and sludge age and this mean cell residence times are important and these three have different meaning and applications which is again discussed here. Now, uh, if we see apart from this some other parameters are also very important that is OLR that is organic loading rate. SLR organic loading on sludge blanket and HRT hydraulic retention time. So, these are also very important parameters which need to be considered for USB study or design aspect and here its performance depends on the concentration of the organic concentration in the influent water. So, COD concentration if we increase gradually we will see these values are changing all OLR, SLR, HRT okay, and liquid upflow velocity these are also changing to some extent and then expected efficiency is also varying. So, these are some parameters which need to be maintained to maintain the performance of the USB reactor. Now, we will see one numerical problem given that the influent to USB reactor has following characteristics BOD equal to 350 mg per liter, COD equal to 820 mg per liter, TSS equal to 385 mg per liter, VSS equal to 260 mg per liter, flow rate 8000 meter cube per day, depth of sludge blanket is 2.1 meter, reactor height including settler is 5 meter, effective coefficient ratio of sludge to total volume in sludge blanket. Okay. So, that is equal to 0 0.80 and then determine HRT for sludge age of 30 days assuming 80 percent BOD removal efficiency, reactor area and organic loading on reactor and the sludge blanket. So, these we have to calculate and this is our the given data. So, what we will do? we will be using different expressions we have already discussed and in this case say 80 percent BOD removal and initial BOD is 350. So, what will be the BOD removal efficiency that is 80 percent. So, USB effluent BOD will be 350 into 0 0.20 that is remaining 80 percent removed. So, 20 percent remaining. So, that is equal to 70 mg per liter. Then total sludge production. So, total sludge production is new BSS produce, produced in BOD removal. So, that is initial BOD into BOD removal into yield coefficient 
and then non degradable residue. So, which VSS some part is biodegradable and some part may not be. So, that is the non biodegradable non degradable residue that is equal to VSS mg per liter into 1 minus degradable fraction and the new as received in the inflow that is equal to TSS minus VSS. So, that was the total solid minus VSS. So, this much we are getting as the as material. So, that will be in the sludge. So, total sludge production that will be sum of these 3. Now, assuming yield coefficient is 0 0.1 gram VSS per gram BOD removed. So, this is a typical value and then new volatile suspended solids produced in BOD removal equal to then 0 0.1 into 350 into 0 0.8 as per the expression. So, that is 28 mg per liter and if we assume that 40 percent degradable in the VSS then non degradable 1 minus 0 0.4. So, that is into VSS that is 260 it is given VSS. So, 1 minus 0 0.4 that is equal to 156 we are getting mg per liter. So, as received here we are getting your TSS minus VSS that is 385 minus 260 that is equal to 125. So, this all 3 we will add and we will be getting this one. So, this is mg per liter. So, if we want to convert it into kg. So, this unit it will be coming as kg per meter cube and total sludge produced equal to this one into flow rate. We have to multiply it with the flow rate. Okay. So, this is this will be 156. Now, solid retention time SRT we have this expression and total sludge in the reactor we can use this formula and in this formula that we have reactor volume. So, we will multiply it we will replace it by HRT into flow rate okay. and then we have this is into flow rate into 1 by 1000. So, that HRT will be 30 into this one and this will come in the denominator 17 to 0 0.80 and this by 2.1 into this and 1000 factor we have that will be here and 24 we are converting into days. So, that is becoming this. So, this one okay. up flow velocity is reactor height divided by HRT that is equal to 9.459 meter per hour that is equal to 0 0.528 meter per hour. So, then reactor area, reactor area required will be flow rate divided by up flow rate. So, that is 8000 meter cube per day 0 0.57 meter per hour. So, we are getting this one and 631.313 meter square and organic loading rate that will be COD load by volume of the reactor. So, influence COD into flow rate divided by volume of the reactor. So, now we are assuming the reactor of 20 meter width into 34 meter length into 5 meter side water depth plus 0 0.5 meter free board. So, in that case organic loading load will be this into this one the flow rate and then uh, volume of the reactor. So, this one. So, this 1000 is for the conversion. Okay. So, then gram to kg conversion. So, this is equal to 1.93 kg per meter cube per day. Now, we will discuss on the lagoon. So, lagoon we see that this is very cheaper method for biological treatment of wastewater and here if it is a lagoon. So, Q flow rate and SO inlet organic concentration then S is the organic concentration in the outlet. So, in this case if we apply the mass balance then we will get BOD in is equal to BOD out plus BOD consumed. So, Q into SO that is BOD in plus Q into S out plus V into K S. So, that is the BOD consumed and now if we rearrange. So, S by SO that is 1 by 1 plus K into V by Q. So, by rearranging we are getting this one and V by Q is nothing but the theta that is hydraulic retention time. So, then S by SO equal to 1 by 1 plus k theta. When S by SO is the fraction of the soluble BOD remaining, so this is SO, S, this is S and this is SO. So, what is the fraction remaining in it and k reaction rate 
coefficient and theta hydraulic retention time V reactor volume and Q flow rate. So, this is the expression which relates S and SO in a lagoon and the lagoon performance depends on different factors like say BOD lagoon design depends on many factors like say BOD removal, effluent characteristics, temperature effect and oxygen requirement, energy requirement for mixing, solid separation needed. So, all those things will be considered for the design of the lagoon. So, this is for one lagoon we are discussing, but it may happen that number of lagoons are in series. In that case, we can correlate the uh, output and input, the inlet, the outlet and inlet concentration. So, if you have number of lagoons in a series, so this is our inlet, so this is our outlet. So, this outlet will be the inlet for this one. So, again this is outlet, this outlet is the inlet for this one. So, that way it will be going. So, for this particular tank say if the volume it, that is uh, for this particular for this particular lagoon. So, S 1 by S o that is equal to 1 by 1 plus k theta to the power n, but this will be number of tanks we are using, number of lagoons we are using. So, that will be divided by theta total total theta divided by n. So, this is the residence time here total residence time theta. So, that will be theta by n in each ok, we are equal volume. So, we are getting 1 plus k into theta by n to the power n. So, this will be the expression which can be used for the finding out the relationship between the final concentration here that is S n and this is your S o. So, S n by S o is equal to 1 by 1 plus k theta by n to the power n and again we can use the k t equal to k, k 20 into theta to the power t minus 20 and that way we can get the value of k t. This k t will be used here, we will be knowing the value of theta and we will be knowing the number and we can calculate the A c or S n okay, and find out the relationship between S n and S o. So, after this in this class, thank you very much for your presence.